In this presentation, we will see about testing for primality. What primality test we are going to see in this presentation? It's the Fermat's primality test. Let's see the outcomes first. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1, we will understand the Fermat's primality test with example and outcome number 2, we will know the drawback of Fermat's primality test. Let's dive into the topic of the day, the Fermat's primality test. Firstly, we should understand what is this primality test. When you are given with a number and you are asked to determine whether the given number is a prime number or not, if it is a small number, you can easily work it out. Think if a number is given which is a big number. Then you need some technique to check whether the given number is a prime number or not. Primality test take number from the user and it determine whether the given number is a prime number or not. There are many primality tests. In this presentation, we gonna focus on the Fermat's primality test. So it's clear that we are going to determine whether the given number is prime or not. Say if a number p is given, is p prime? This Fermat's primality test is going to answer whether the given number is a prime number or not. How it is going to determine whether it is a prime number or not? So obviously there is an algorithm, right? How that algorithm is going to work? It's based on the test. What test it is going to do? It's going to test a power p minus a. So when you are given with a number p to determine whether it is a prime number or not, then the algorithm is going to compute a power p minus a. What is this a? Let's see that now. p is prime if this is a multiple of p. It means p is prime if a power p minus a is a multiple of p for the values of a from 1 to less than p. a power p minus a is a multiple of p for all the values of a that are greater than 1 and less than p. So this primality test is mainly depending on the important formula a power p minus a. No worries, let's see an example, you will understand things clearly. Let's see some examples. Let's focus on the first example is 5 prime. I'm taking a small number so that you can easily understand the algorithm. Let's solve this now. From the question, it is clear that p is 5. We are going to determine is this a prime number. So let's start from a is greater than 1 to less than p which is 4. So we are going to do this operation a power p minus a for a equal to 1, a equal to 2, a equal to 3 and a equal to 4 because the value of a is greater than or equal to 1 and less than p. Since we have taken p is equal to 5 here, so a is going to take the value from 1 to 4. Let's start with a is equal to 1. For a is equal to 1, 1 power 5 minus 1, which is equal to 1 minus 1, we get 0. Is 0 a multiple of 5? Yes, 0 is a multiple of 5. So 0, you can also write it as 5 into 0, right? So obviously, 0 is a multiple of any number. 0 is a multiple of any number. So obviously, 0 is a multiple of 5 as well. So for a is equal to 1, a power p minus a is giving the result, which is a multiple of 5. Let's try for a is equal to 2. a power p minus a will give 2 power 5 minus 2. 2 power 5 is 32, minus 2 we get 30. Obviously, 30 is a multiple of p, which is 5 in this case. Let's try with a is equal to 3. When a is equal to 3, we get 3 power 5 minus 3, which is equal to 243 minus 3, which is equal to 240, which is obviously a multiple of 5. And finally, we are left with only one value for a, which is 4. Because the number we have taken is 5, and we are required to run this algorithm from a is equal to 1 to a is equal to 4. So already we have completed a is equal to 1, 2, 3 and we are left with a is equal to 4. Let's do that now. When a is equal to 4, we get 4 power 5 minus 4 which is equal to 1024 minus 4 which is equal to 1020. This is also obviously a multiple of 5. So we have calculated a power p minus a for a values from 1 to 4 where the result is obviously a multiple of 5 and the Fermat's primality test says this 5 is a prime number. I hope things are clear to you. But if you observe this algorithm keenly, there are few major drawbacks. One of the major drawbacks is if the prime number is a big prime number, then this process have to be carried out till that prime number minus 1. So that's the biggest drawback. We can evidence this drawback in the next example. 
Let's dive into example number two. The question is, is 3753 prime? Let's solve it now. We know what we are going to compute. It's a power p minus a. And we are going to take the value for a as a is equal to 1, a is equal to 2, up to 3752. When we take a is equal to 1, we need to compute this for a equal to 2, for a equal to 3, for a equal to 4, up to, we need to do this operation for a is equal to 3752. So, this invites the biggest drawback that manually working out becomes a tough job. So, it doesn't mean that you can't manually work out, but obviously, it is a time consuming one and it takes a lots of effort to do it manually. Even if you ask a computer system to do this, think how many times that computer program needs to run this algorithm or run this loop. If this is p, then p minus 1 times the loop has to run, isn't it? Because that many times you need to verify whether the result of these operations is a multiple of this number or not, isn't it? So, from this, it's clear that it is a time consuming one. And what about the accuracy? Can we 100% depend on the Fermat's primality test? For accuracy related things with respect to Fermat's primality test, I'm going to make you think. What I'm going to make you think? I'm going to give you a question. Is 561 a prime number? And I'm going to ask you to solve this question using Fermat's primality test. And obviously, the answer is going to be either yes or no. That's what the Fermat's primality test is going to determine, whether the number given is a prime number or not. What is the answer for this question? Is 561 prime? Is it yes or no? And the actual answer is 561 is a composite number, which means 561 is not a prime number. But Fermat's primality test will say 561 is a prime number. As far as accuracy is concerned, we cannot 100% rely on Fermat's primality test. Though the algorithm is simple, it's a power p minus a, we are going to determine for all values of a from 1 to p minus 1. It's so easy and simple to implement, but there is always a lack of accuracy with Fermat's primality test. Anyway, please remember this number 561 and we will talk about this number elaborately in the next presentation. Before we sign out, let's see the homework question. The question for you is, is 11 a prime number and you are required to determine whether 11 is a prime number or not using Fermat's primality test. So, I request you to solve this example manually for a is equal to 1, 2, 3 up to a is equal to 10. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the Fermat's primality test with example and we know the drawback of Fermat's primality test. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.